Hey, this is Ashley Spillers, and you're listening to Zero Dark Nerdy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your boy, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with... Ryan Sabre, Captain Cleveland Browns, Cavs, Indians... C-L-E till I die. Look at her face. I love it. You're getting into it. <laughs> we have with us today, I guess, I, don't, I want to say in studio, but really via satellite like the rest of the world during a pandemic. Yeah. Uh, you may know her from roles as Elizabeth in Las Vegas, uh, Rosen's wife in War Dogs, which we'll get to that in a minute, and of course the lovely Miss Swift from Vice Principals, the one, the only Ashley Spillers. Ashley, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. No, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, no worries at all. So real quick, you know, why was it that your name was only Rosen's wife on War Dogs? We have to figure this out here because we got to make sure we got we, we can do better than that. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a good question. Who wrote that, you know? Like, <laughs> I, think <laughs> I think it was Mr. Todd Phillips who I guess decided she didn't deserve a name, but no, um, that was that was fixed, even though it wasn't fixed in the credits. Um, okay. It is a funny story. Um, when I got that job, I was so excited, you know, and I went to work, and uh, I was in my trailer getting ready for the day, and Todd Phillips came and knocked on my trailer, and he kind of he kind of had like a little bit of a like an not an attitude because that's not a nice thing to say, but. He was definitely, it was the first time I'd met him mm -hmm. since getting mm -hmm. the part was the day I went to work. Okay. And so he came by to introduce himself, but it was like he wanted to make sure that I was the real deal, like <laughs> that I was going to bring it or okay. something. He was just like, you know, this is the first time we'd met and I just, I just wanted to come by and make sure, you know, you know, if, if actors show up on my set and they don't know all their lines, I can get rid of you in two seconds and <laughs> call the sound guy over and he can come play a part. And I, I was like, wow. uh, okay. I mean, it was sort of suggesting that maybe I was not a professional, which was really interesting. And so he wanted to run the scene with me, me and him, right there in the trailer before we actually like went to set and began shooting. And he was surprised when I knew my words. <laughs> <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, he asked like, oh, it's, I see it's Rosen's wife here. You know, uh, have you thought about what her name actually might be? And that's when I said, well, yeah, actually I, I have. I thought her, my name should be Emily Rosen. That's my name. Cause I had to give myself a name cause you didn't. Um, <laughs> But it actually ended up being a really great thing because I went to work that day and it went so well that mm -hmm. uh, when they called lunch, we went on a break, he called me over and we had, he, wa he was like, I want to talk to you for a little bit. And we talked for about 15, 20 minutes with the two of us on lunch break because he said he was so impressed with my work that day that he actually invited me to come back the next week for another scene that I wasn't originally written into because he wanted me to be there. So I ended up getting more work and he was a wonderful person. You know, I think maybe he's had some experiences in the past with people in smaller roles, not being prepared or something. Sure, like that. sure. So he felt like he had to come in like guns blazing, but it ended up being a great experience. He had That's that awesome. Brad, he had that Bradley Cooper bum and hangover and I'm sure oh, that just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I want to I want to take a right turn here. I want to know a little bit about you. Okay. Uh -huh. So I know you're from Houston, right? Yeah. Actually Which, outside of Houston, Sugar Land. Okay. okay. Interesting thing about Houston, it's the second largest city mm -hmm. by size mm -hmm. in the United States. Do you know what the first one is? By saw, is yeah, it like, this? is it Los Angeles? It's Jacksonville, Florida, and I always yes, crazy, right? I love telling people from Houston that because they're like, oh my God, Houston's so big, but Jacksonville's even larger just by the sheer size of the city limits themselves. That's very surprising. Fun fact: you you can you can surprise your friends and family when you go home with them. I will. Thank you. So you're from LA, or excuse me, you're from Houston. Now you live in LA. That's right. What is the thing you miss most about home? And what is the thing you love most about LA? 
Ooh, oh good God. Um, I guess the thing I miss most about home is I don't know, just that like Texas. It's there's a feeling, you know what I mean? Mm. It's like a friendly, laid back feeling, and and the food. I love the food. Barbecue. <laughs> Barbecue, the Tex-Mex, Mexican food is yeah. so good there. It's different than California Mexican food. Um, I, I just miss the food. There's some really good food. And um, what do I like the most about What do you like the most about L.A.? About L.A.? <laughs> well, when it used to be L.A., now it's been shut down for a year, right? right? <laughs> yeah. I think I, I like get, the thing I like most about LA is getting out of LA, <laughs> the outskirts <laughs> and like going into the mountains yeah. or, you know, there's so many cool places outside of Los Angeles that are easily accessible. So I love that because I love being outside and yeah. One, one of the things that LA traffic is horrific. I mean, obviously oh, you live there and you know it, but one of the things that just is stuck in my mind, and this is a picture you see every year, and I think it's during Thanksgiving, the stopped traffic the day before Thanksgiving at nighttime, where all you see are the taillights of cars going this way and the headlights just stop for like miles and miles and miles. That's LA every year. And when I think of LA, that's the image I get in my mind. Yeah. It's a, I mean, I feel like that's LA, not during a pandemic, that's LA every day at five. It feels <laughs> like. I mean, anytime Jeez. I've been leaving anywhere around that time and you just make that turn and you're kind of hope, like, as you're getting out of the street, we're like, please, please, please. Oh, you know, it's just like a sea of cars. It's terrible. So, so to Saba's point there with the traffic, when you're normally going to auditions, like how early do you leave for these auditions, especially based on the LA traffic? I can only imagine. Yeah, you should always leave, I mean, at least an hour okay. before. I think that can be pretty safe depending on what time it is, which I'm, I'm kind of notoriously just right on time or a little bit late which is terrible is. Um, oh. oh don't worry she, it's it's ashley she's she's always late yeah but She'll she's nice here. so maybe we'll give her a break <laughs> who are your influences who inspired you when when you were younger oh god so many i mean so many just so many people no um all of them all of them <laughs> I, I mean, movies. I loved movies, you know, so that's really what did it was watching all these movies. But as far as people who I love, who I would think like, oh, man, I want to I want to take some of that or have some of that or, you know, just can only hope. Um, I really loved Sigourney Weaver, weirdly. I well, mean, nice. she, maybe that's not weird. She's wonderful because one of my favorite movies as a kid was Gorillas in the Mist. Mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah, Diane Fossey. Mm -hmm. and, and she was just so amazing in that. And so that really, I mean, that was a big one for me. And then as I got older, I just started discovering more people because I watched so many things. But like Holly Hunter, I just think Love her. so fantastic. Frances McDormand is just like oh. one of the most incredible creatures. I don't even know what to yes. call She's not just human. She's more than that. Um, yeah, I mean, so many people. That's great. Yeah, they're just so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, then let me, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who oh. is your favorite? Maybe not now, because that's a little weird, right? Because you, you work with some of these people. But who is your, growing up, who was your favorite actor, actress, actor? Growing up, you know, it'll... It was a different flavor of actor, yeah, right? So, like, absolutely. I loved Drew Barrymore oh, so yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, I felt like we were kindred spirits or something when I was, like, young and the person who I was just like, oh, that I would just watch any of her movies, didn't matter how bad they might have been, or she just always lit up whatever she was doing for me. That's great. That's a she great answer. just weird and wonderful yeah. and... She just seemed great. <laughs> and I loved <laughs> E.T., what kid didn't? And she was Gertie and E.T. And I mean, I loved that movie. I did too. 
Yeah, who did it? Such a such a good movie. The um, you know, as, as we are getting into uh, Christmas season here, do you have? And we had an episode on this last year. We just recorded favorite Christmas songs this past uh, weekend. Do you have like? I guess two part question, like an all time favorite Christmas movie mm-hmm. and an all time favorite Christmas song, or just a Ooh. Christmas song that you just cannot stand at all. What's your you What's your favorite Christmas movie, and why is it Die Hard? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's not my favorite Christmas movie. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the other night I was here with my fella. We, I mean, we lived together, so he was here too. But... <laughs> But he Die Hard was on, on one of the in the little boxes on one of the things, and he was like, "Oh, Die Hard!" And I just I was kind of like, "No, we're not watching that one. That's not what I want to watch." <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I love a Christmas story. That's too good. That kid is so funny mm-hmm. in that. Um, another mm-hmm. holiday movie I like. Did you ever see Home for the Holidays? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I guess it's more of a Thanksgiving movie, maybe, but it's Holly Hunter mm-hmm. and uh, Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's directed by uh, uh, Jodie Foster, which is so. God, cool. I haven't seen that movie in years, but you're it's right. That true. is a good one. That is a good it's one. Hilarious! It's so funny. I think I like '90s movies a lot. Me too. Oh God, yeah. God, yeah. And then as far yeah. as like Christmas songs, is there one that just sticks out to you that's just, you hear it and you're not turning it off, even if it's the middle of July? <laughs> Have you ever heard that one? It's it's like, it's like a, it sounds like it's a kid singing it. And it's like, I want a hippopotamus yeah. for Christmas. <laughs> Only a hippopotamus one. will do. That, that. One. that was pretty good. Thanks. That was pretty good. <laughs> was that you actually that did that one? Yeah, maybe it could be. I could do a remake or yeah, something. Yeah, you could. You know? I think you just. I think you just did. <laughs> Similar voice. I want to I, look. I I really want this whole thing to be about you, right? Mm-hmm. But I gotta ask you a couple questions, and and it's about vice principals. I I'm <laughs> sorry, and I'm sure you get this all the time, but you know the Miss Swift character. You were you you're you were amazing in that, huh. and I went back and I was watching some of the you know of the two seasons just to sort of prepare and yeah the interactions with you and Danny McBride are just it's epic right like how could you keep a straight face (laughs) like okay I'll go back to that Let, let, let me ask another question before you answer that like he's so good at playing an asshole okay. right but I have to believe like in real life he's just the sweetest guy right he is the sweetest guy. He like he just so seems nice. like he is. Yes. So okay. So let's. So now that everybody understands that this guy is actually just playing an asshole, but he's really a nice person. So how do you keep a straight face when he's like berating you like that? It's very hard, and a lot of the time <laughs> I did not. I mean, there were times when uh, Jody Hill, you know, he directed the first season where mm-hmm. he. I mean, I think of one scene in particular where I just. I mean, no matter what I did, I could not stop messing up the take with by laughing when it was we're in a gym and he comes in and they're decorating the gym or something and he's pissed about how it's coming together and he says something like it looks like a fart in the wind or yes. something <laughs> and that I just every time I stood there and just would and I would have to just like put my head down and try and turn the laugh into some kind of like. Like ugly face. No face because and Jody was like Ashley Ashley you can't laugh you can't laugh on this one <laughs> try to keep it together okay, okay. you know but it was very difficult and that happened a lot I mean he's so funny <laughs> he he he's he's a genius and the reality is, is he wasn't the only genius on that show and I'm glad you said it like that Walton Coggins is Talk to me about just the opportunity for two years, two seasons, to watch those two guys. How much do you learn from those guys who are just so great at what they do? And I'm going to say, I think Walton Coggins is probably one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood. I don't think he gets nearly enough credit. But just talk about kind of just the time spent watching those guys what yeah. you learn from those guys, those kind of things. Oh, God, so much. I mean, it was such a 
just like joy and privilege to get to be there, you know, because I come in and out a lot, but I would right. purposely, I wouldn't, I got to a point where I got comfortable with everybody where I stopped going back to my trailer in between, you know, my scenes and just, I would stay and watch the monitor and watch everything that was happening because it was like, you, sh you can't walk away from this. Everything that they do, especially together. I mean, individually, they're each, they're both geniuses, I think, in their own ways. And together, they're just a match made in heaven. And I went, the way they just play off of one another, they are each so present and so just fully like steeped in their characters that anything can happen. And they, I mean, they would go off script. The, the mm -hmm. things they were throwing back and forth, they were just so free and that's the thing i took the most they took major risks both of them they would just do things and say things and be just crazy stuff would fly out of their mouths and you were like what <laughs> <laughs> you know and it was fearless. just it, oh so fearless and walton is such a cool guy uh, you know we weren't super close for the first season because we didn't have a whole lot of interaction i mean on set we'd see each other and he was nice but the second season we were around each other a bit more and he actually invited me over one night to come by and have margaritas at his house just the two of us because he realized we after we'd had a scene that we hadn't really gotten to know one another yeah. and he wanted to do that. And we just sat and talked about acting and he told me about him coming up and gave me advice and told me, he, you know, that I was right where I needed to be. And it was, it, to this day, it's one of the most special conversations and moments that I've had with another actor who was just being so generous with their time. It's a great but story. They're amazing. I mean, they're just both. I, I mean, it, it, it seems so long ago now and also like it was yesterday because for me as an actor, that was my first like recurring role mm -hmm. on a show where I got to be with a group of people like that for so long. And same thing with that. I was meant to only be in about three episodes mm. of the show. And then after uh, the second episode, Danny came up to me in the trailer and he asked me like, are you enjoying it? Are you having fun? And I said, yeah, are you kidding? I'm having a blast. And he was like, you think you'd want to come back a little more often? We're thinking maybe it's, you know, going well, maybe we can work you in more. And so that's, that's what they did. They, they like gave me longevity on that show because they are generous and when they see something that's working that's kind of how they work you know they're like oh this works we're going with that you know sure. yeah i mean same with Edie patterson who is also a genius on the show i mean she's miss abbott and yep. she's yeah. crazy and um, same thing happened with her i mean her part just grew and grew kind of organically because she's so incredible <laughs> she's she's like out of this world. Yeah. Out of this oh, righteous world. Righteous gemstones, especially. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Not Goodness only vice gracious. president, righteous gemstones. I mean, she she's fantastic. But I, you know, just to put a bow on it, I love if you can't tell Walton Coggins so much. The the Boyd Crowder character on Justified. I mean, he yeah. is. It's like uh, he's just man. He just draws you. He draws you in. And, and Danny McBride, obviously. I don't. I don't want to shortchange him either. But. That's, <laughs> I love hearing, I loved hearing that story. When you were telling that story about, you know, them doing just the, the acts of kindness, the, the Walton situation with the margaritas and then Danny, like I got butterflies. Like that is, I, I'm just, that's, that's great. It's great that's stuff. It's a real deal. And you know, I've, I've done enough now where I've learned like that doesn't always happen. Right. People do not have to do that. They do not have to go out of their way like that. Um, and they just, they're really unique and special in that way. I, when that was over for me, I wept because it was like, I don't know if anything is ever going to be the equivalent of this and just how unique this experience has been, you know? That's so. great. <laughs> well, on that note too, as far as what's coming up next, I know you can't spill too many beans, but you know, as far as 2021, I guess kind of a two part question here too. You know, what is, for those of us that aren't on the West Coast, that don't live in L.A., you know, what is kind of the, the scene like as far as auditions? Are they all, like, remote now to where you have to kind of do them like this? And then to that point, too, 
you know, uh, what do you have coming up as far as, you know, roles? I know you love the independent film scene as mm -hmm. well. Like what, what do you have coming up in 2021 that you can allow us and the fans to know? Sure. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's been really weird as far as the pandemic and, and being an actor, especially for someone like me and kind of where I'm at. I still, you know, I'm still, I still very, feel very much like on my way trying to, you know, I'm still clawing, trying to like yeah. work my way into anything I end up being a part of. And so I'm not just getting phone calls left and right. Like some folks are. Quit, quit calling me. <laughs> Leave me alone. Jeez, Marty, quit calling me. <laughs> I pray for the day. But um, <laughs> it's been weird. I've, you know, at first it was very slow where I thought, am I ever going to have another audition again? And then right. it's, in the last few months, it started picking up, but they, a few have been over Zoom like this. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of them, you're just taping yourself and sending them to your agents to send on. And so it's a lot of just working with what you've got. And, you know, last minute they come through and you just got to, you know, that night, all of a sudden, when you've just been sitting around all day, like, shit, I gotta, I gotta, like, do something here. Uh, Take my PJs off. <laughs> yeah. So, it's been a lot of that, um, which is, you know, it's all right. I do a lot of voiceover auditions, too, mm. and so that kind of leads into what I have been working on. I've been working on a couple of animated shows uh, doing voiceover for them, which I've been so lucky to be able to do yeah. in the studio in my house that I had to set up. Nice. Because we're recording full on episodes of these shows just from right here. And I can't talk about them, unfortunately. Sure. sure. Um, one is, I guess I can say, you know it. <laughs> it's a <laughs> reboot of a classic that I'm so excited to be a part of. Um, and it's a kid's show, but it's one that you probably know and, and love. I've yet to find someone who isn't excited about it. But I don't, it, suck, it sucks so bad. <laughs> We're going to have you back on. Yeah, we'll have when, you back when on you when it's official. talk about it. I know, I wanted to say, I was like, you would be so much more excited to talk to me after this. Oh, uh, we'll still be excited to talk to Anytime you want to come it. on, you are always welcome yeah. on the show. Oh, well, yeah. Thank oh, yeah. You. <laughs> Promote anything. Yeah. And you did you did voiceover work on Red versus Blue. I did. Right? Yeah, yeah. The Halo series. That was really fun. Yeah. yeah. And you were oh, you, you so you played you played uh, uh, Huggins, correct? <laughs> yeah, Huggins. Yeah. She was like a little light beam. Um, Joe Nicolosi uh, mm. is a friend of mine from Austin. He's a director. He's who pulled me onto that. Uh, he okay. was directing at the time. Uh, he's a great he's he's great but yeah that was so much fun so i've done voiceover over the years for sure i've i've finally taken it to like the next level and i'm getting to do some really really fun stuff now so i'm sorry that i can't say more it's okay. part of me was like what if i just do it and then i thought no nope. what are you doing they told no, you no, no. we don't want we don't want to we don't want to be the reason you get that's in how trouble. we that's oh. how we that that's a reason for you to come back. That's right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get get off movies for a second. We're gonna go back and forth a little bit here. You said, you said you liked food. Oh, I you love. You're very food. passionate about food. Oh yeah. I have a, I have a really important question for you about what? food. Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> no. Right? Why not? Thank what you. is the, Is Thank a hot you, dog Ashley. a sandwich? Think about it. <laughs> get it you know it's bread and there's stuff in between the the bread it's i just don't think of it as a sandwich is a ham is a hamburger a sandwich no well, we, no oh well see i would think of that as definitely closer to a sandwich yes. okay it's closer yes i think this is this is an age-old debate <laughs> i mean this is something that is I, have you never heard this as a hot dog a sandwich thing before no, I it, haven't. This is an age-old debate. We have it in my house all the time. I've been with I've been with my girlfriend for ten years, and I've been trying to convince her for ten years that a hot dog's a sandwich. 
and we go places and we'll be at bars and I bring this up. So, you know, just you being a person who's passionate about food, I figured this would be right up your alley. <laughs> I, I love any questions about food. I love jokes about food. Um, yeah, I don't know that a hot dog is a sandwich. So you're officially, your, your final answer, you are officially a part of the, the hot dog is not a sandwich crew. I guess, yes, I am, okay. but I feel, well, I just feel badly about that. I like, <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. We're still friends. Yeah, stick stick with your answer. You're good. Yeah, I'm thinking of having <laughs> a sandwich for dinner. <laughs> I, I want to make a grilled cheese, but like yes. a fancy one. Nice. Okay, let's talk about that because that sounds delicious. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 when, when, when you're talking fancy grilled cheese, we talking like sure. Gruyere and all that stuff? Well, yeah, but this one specifically, it was a recipe in the New York Times that has goat cheese and caramelized onions and uh, pear and uh, crunchy sourdough bread. Yes. Even Kalamata olives, which okay. are ooh, crazy. Um, but I'm going to do it, and I'm going to have it either with a beer or some red wine. <laughs> so you got... <laughs> You got the salty. You got you got a little bit of sweet in there. That's 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 a home run. That is a home run grilled cheese right there. I think yeah, we, so we too. might I we think... might need a we might need some feedback on that. We're yes. gonna need an email with a picture and a description okay. on there. Sure. We got, so we're gonna learn more next time we talk to you. We're gonna learn about this grilled cheese. You're gonna have uh -huh. to remember. We're gonna learn about the the voiceover work that you're doing. Yes. I'm just making a running list here. Okay, great. No, please. I'm coming back. <laughs> what you got, be here? So continuing to stay deep out there. I think I think we saw glimpses of a him dog. or her a, a second ago. Willow. Willow. Yeah. Willow. She's a behind the computer. Now. Okay. Yeah, I thought I thought um, I saw her briefly, but yeah, I wanted to talk about Willow. What kind of dog she is, how long he had her, all that, all that fun stuff. Willow is a monster. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Willow is um, part chow and part terrier and part something else, probably. Okay. We've had her a little over two years. We got her from uh, the Pasadena Animal uh, Shelter nearby and when she was about five. So she's a little over seven now. And she's, you know, she's a handful. She's something else, <laughs> which I love about her. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it makes now when I see people with these like doodles that are so sweet and just want to, you know, go up to anyone and say hello. I'm kind of like, you don't even know what it is to really have a you dog, a street dog <laughs> who doesn't like any other dogs and wants to <laughs> kill them all. Mm -hmm. And because that's Willow, but she's the most wonderful dog to us. I mean, she's just the sweetest and the best, and she's never gone to the bathroom in the house, not once. She makes no messes. She's like the <laughs> perfect dog in so many ways, and then also just a, a nightmare sometimes. She tried to kill <laughs> our neighbor's dog. She got it in her mouth once and whipped it around it like a squirrel, and she was going to kill it if we didn't stop her, and thank God she didn't. We got the dog out of the mouth. Somehow the dog was fine, but I mean, we had a moment where we were like, Jesus, we got to kill her, and we got to kill her on our hands. She is, so we have to, you know, we have to take a lot of precautions with her, but somehow she's totally worth it. <laughs> well, she sounds lovely. Um. <laughs> she is. She really is. But that's her. <laughs> nice. I guess uh, I only have a couple more questions left, and you know, we got got to ask the the experience with with scenes with De Niro. You know, as far as you as an as an actress, you know, kind of just give us a rundown on on how that went, how he is working with him, all that. Because I'm sure, I, I mean, I I can I can maybe do voice acting. I can never be a real actor or actress like yourself. Because mm -hmm. just like we, how you were saying earlier with the whole not being able to keep it together for Danny McBride, I I think like Todd Phillips would have kicked me off a while ago. Yeah. I would have not even made it on set if I'm ever in front of Todd Phillips. So how does someone like yourself, you know, just coming up, getting your foot into Hollywood and all that, then all of a sudden you're starting to do scenes with De Niro, how, you know, how, what's your kind of mental process on getting ready for that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know what to do. Are you kidding yeah. me? I'm 
mean, it was like I auditioned for it. I got that job out of Texas. I was still living in Texas in Austin when I got that. And it was something I had put myself on tape for. I had no idea that the scene I was reading was going to be opposite someone like Robert De Niro. So I think I was relaxed in the process because of that yeah and then i just got this call probably a month and a half later that i got the part and that all my work was going to be with pretty much only de niro and i mean i lost my mind yes and i we shot that in atlanta so they flew me to atlanta and they put me up in a fancy hotel at the ritz carlton downtown and i could not sleep the night before sure you know what i mean like i just the the guy at the front uh when i checked in the concierge guy i was so excited when i checked in you know he was like are you here with the movie and i said yeah yeah i am you know and i was like <laughs> all my scenes are with robert de niro <laughs> I, there was no being like like oh come on I was so excited like I could not keep it together and so he sent me up a bottle of wine to my room to congratulate me with a card telling me you know like that I was gonna be great the next day he was so nice and just walking onto the set I'd heard so many stories because that's what happens when you get a job with someone like Robert De Niro everyone who has ever heard anything about working with Robert De Niro has something to say about it So I heard a lot of like, oh, I heard, you know, he's not very nice and he's probably not going to want to talk to you or this or that. And I did not have that experience at all. From the moment I walked on the set, you know, he introduced himself as Bob. I knew you were going to say that was going to be my question. Did he introduce himself as Bobby? Because that's a whole thing, right? Like this is Robert De Niro. And he's like, hey, I'm Bobby. It's nice to meet you. You're like, you're you're not fucking Bobby. You're Robert (laughs) fucking De Niro. Robert De Niro. Yeah. No, he said, hey, hey, I'm Bob. And then he was like, "Uh, so you know do you want to you want to work the scene out a little bit you know maybe we can run it a little or just work through it you know which I appreciated so much because it immediately put me at ease he was treating me like a fellow actor Mm -hmm. that's awesome and he wanted to work it out so we tried it you know where I walk into the apartment with him and we do all these things and then he was like man no this doesn't this doesn't feel right why would I invite you into the apartment I'm trying to get you out of here so yeah no uh yeah let's not do that and he had a little flip phone he doesn't have he didn't have a smartphone at the time he just had this little flip phone so every now and then he'd like ah hang on I gotta go I gotta go take this real quick so we'd walk off with his phone <laughs> He was a lot shorter than I expected him to be. Yes. But he was so kind. He gave me kisses on my cheek. He was just, it was so. He's a gentleman. He was a gentleman. He knew, he knew what a big deal it was for me, but he, he was just, he was just great. It was great. I had a wonderful. You got some, you got some stories. It's so fun. I can't believe it sometimes. I'm like, little old me. Like, I mean, like, I was a little chubby kid in Sugarland, Texas. You know what I mean? Like, I, anytime I said I wanted to be an actor when I was a kid, it was kind of like, yeah, okay, Ash, (laughs) you know, (laughs) sure thing. And so for these, just even these moments to happen, I, I never take them for granted. I am constantly like pinching myself going, oh, okay. I just hope this isn't the last time I just, please, you know, this is, so it's just, yeah, he's wonderful. I get the sense. How do you prepare for that? I mean, you you don't. Right. And I get the feeling this isn't going to be the last time you have those kind of opportunities. Agree. If you you weren't an actress, an actor, what would you have been? I probably would have been, I mean, when I was a kid, you know, it's like a lot of kids probably, I was like, I'm going to be a marine biologist and work with orcas. (laughs) An anesthesiologist. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, I was actually on the way, because I I did go to school and not for acting. I I went for sociology and German. (laughs) So I I was probably on my way to doing something in like social work or Mm. something like that. I mean, that was, I never really knew. I wanted to be so many things. I changed my major like eight times in college. It was a real problem. I could not settle. You know, I would go see a movie and then I'd be like, ooh, Nicole Kidman was a, was a, uh, what's it? 
a translator in that movie. That looked cool. I think I want to be a translator. I'm going to work at the UN, you know, and I would change my major to international relations for a second. And I'd be like, I don't want to, I don't think that's what I want to do. I mean, I do want to travel, but mm, I don't think I want to be a translator. So, you know, it was, I was pretty, I hopped around a lot. So <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Of what I, could have been. <laughs> I, I could have been anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing with too much math. I, that's not my, it's never been my forte. Mm. Numbers, numbers. <laughs> I'm bad with money. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as, as far as pop culture goes, are there mm. any particular, you know, obviously we're all gigantic cinephiles. We love movies. Mm -hmm. Are there any genres of movies that kind of, that you like gravitate to, whether as far as professionally or just, you know, you're sitting around the house with Willow and, and your, your fella. And, yeah. uh, you know, as far as that music, anything else, like what are some of the things that just, you know, that you're just super into that the fans want to know about? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm so open when it comes to movies because I just, uh, when I find myself being like, nah, I don't want to watch that, that's kind of like a, well, maybe actually you should, that, that response that you're having, maybe you should. But some things I love, I mean, I love watching foreign films. I particularly love, tend to love movies like Italian mm -hmm. movies. I, uh, last night I watched, finally watched a movie I'd been meaning to watch forever called The Great Beauty. I don't know if you've heard of it but you should go see it it's wonderful it's kind of in the realm of like you know did you ever see cinema paradiso the <laughs> it's a great uh, another italian wonderful movie probably i don't know when it was made i probably not as long ago as i think maybe like in the 70s or something okay but it's wonderful. So I, t I, 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 I tend to be drawn toward kind of like these grand romantic mm -hmm. big stories, which that one is, you know, it's all about like the meaning of life and this man who's been this hotshot journalist his whole life in the social scene and he gets older and he starts to realize like how empty his life has actually been and the thing he's been searching for was not in anything that he's been doing. And, you know, I love, I love that. I'm kind of a romantic in that way but also I like sci-fi stuff I mean it's not a movie it's a show but I uh, very unexpectedly loved Battlestar Galactica mm. so much I could not get enough of it it was wonderful um, I like dark comedies I like dark darkly funny things um because I don't find a lot of things these days super funny if I'm being really honest I think comedy the sticky stuff right yeah, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I don't find a lot of things super funny. I guess I find dark things funny. But I'm trying to think of something that, that like, that comes to me that, that I think is really funny that's maybe unexpected. I don't know. Maybe it'll come to me. It first. will. It will. Yeah, <laughs> it will. But these are things, you know, I don't know. I, I, that's, no, I mean, I, I think... I'm certainly not a, a foreign film guy. I'm yeah. pretty I'm pretty lazy when it comes to like the movies. I, I'm like a you know, I like superhero movies. I like cool. I, I like mafia movies, those kind of things. But yeah, it's it's always nice to get the perspective of yeah. somebody who's a little bit more cultured than I am. <laughs> well, but, you know, it does take work though, because you're having to read it and that's yeah. It is. Yes. I mean I can't I can't turn on listen, I'm not doing this every night. It like <laughs> You know, I also have to go, okay, I'm going to really sit here and be invested and read <laughs> what's happening because there's no like eating and watching, you know, you right. can't you, do you're that. Focused. You have to be there. So I do understand that not every night is a night for an Italian film. <laughs> an Italian, an Italian epic. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this one. This is a tough one. I've asked this to a couple guests that we've had and it's, it's always interesting the answer we get. And, and I'm going to tell you mine just to kind of break the ice, okay? Okay. What's a movie that a lot of people like that you don't? So mine is Gladiator, okay? Oh. Like when Gladiator first came out, and I tell this story. Brian's heard me tell this story multiple times. You know, I saw Gladiator several weeks after it came out, and I spent weeks. I was in high school. I spent weeks. People were talking about how great this movie Gladiator was, and I finally went and saw it, and I was like, mm. Yeah, I mean it's good, but it's, you know it's not like 
it's not like the best movie I've ever seen. So what's a movie like that? That like it's it's a very like famous movie that a lot of people like that you're just like not really my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. I'm very generous with movies, so I will often find the things to like. But I gotta say, it's kind of a more recent-ish one. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and you're a superhero movie. I knew this was, I knew you were gonna do this. I hope you're not offended, but I did not like Captain Marvel. I could barely get through it. I thought it was boring. That's and a, that's pretty common. That's a pretty common take. It is? Yes. Because I mean, I just know how much Brie Larson is so loved she's and she's great. But I did not like that movie. I did not like it. So what's let me let me do the flip Another side. Another one? Let me do the flip <laughs> side. Okay. So what's a movie that a lot of people that doesn't have a lot of critical acclaim. And listen, let's go mainstream on this because your library of movies that you've seen is clearly entirely different than mine. Sure, but right. um, like, like a guilty pleasure, like a movie that a lot of people don't necessarily like. Mine is Hudson Hawk. Have you ever seen the movie Hudson Hawk with Bruce no. Willis? No. Bruce, Bruce Willis, Danny Aiello came out in the early 90s they're they're cat burglars uh -huh. and while they're oh. doing their jobs uh, performing their their robberies they sing jazz songs <laughs> so they know how long the robbery is going to take and they have such this catalog of jazz songs so they're like oh it's going to take four minutes and 37 seconds he's like "Ooh, mac the knife and they start singing mac the knife while Listen to me. It's actually pretty good. So you got to check it out. So what's a movie like that that just doesn't have a lot of critical acclaim? A lot of people don't like, but you love it. Um, I think it's kind of easy, actually. Do you remember the movie Duplex with yes. Ben Stiller and uh, Drew Barrymore? I think that movie is so funny. It's I think it's movie. hilarious. But anyone I tell that to, where I'm like, have you seen Duplex? It's hilarious. They're, if they've seen it, they're like, that movie was terrible. It was not funny. <laughs> or they're just like, no, and I'm not going to watch it. I mean, it's just people don't seem to like that movie, which I do not understand because I think it is so, so, so. I funny. like it too. You do? <laughs> I so, do. It's a good film. Yeah, I think it's great. Duplex. I think it's really, really funny. You got anything else, Brian? Uh, I think I think we went through everything there, man. I'm good. If you're good, I, I, know. I know you're got you got a hard stop coming up too. I know you want to get ready for Ashley. So, oh, I look, we're good. I, mean, we're I can't. I can't thank you enough. I this yeah. this conversation. We we've done a lot of a lot of interviews. This is one of the, if not the yeah. best. This is one of the oh, best ones. Come yeah. on, Your, I'm, no, I'm serious. Your story is um, it's it's inspiring. Yeah, I think that uh, you know, I, I there's not a lot. You know, there's not a lot of like interviews and and things. You know, we I had to do some digging for you, yeah. and um, you know, for us to actually have an opportunity to really get your story out there is yeah. it's, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. Yeah. Oh, and God. I mean, at, at the end of the day, too, you know, we love seeing people like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know that are that are on the rise and coming up and that's the story we love to tell too you know to give other people out there whether you know tips kind of advice the whole nine yards you know my daughter i don't know if you know she's in film school at uncw oh, so cool. she actually was accepted to, to the nc school of arts which is where danny mcbride went yeah, that so, whole crew went there. There, yeah. Okay. Oh, awesome. Yeah, her. Funny too, because as she goes to UNCW, all her film friends are like, "You are crazy for turning down NC School of Arts to come to UNCW," but hey. you know, she she has no regrets. And uh, I I always tell her, you know, anything you want in life is not going to come easy. It's going to take hard work. And you know, we're all pulling for you. You know, you're you're a rising star in our eyes, yeah. um, for sure. And we would love to have you back on Absolutely. anytime you want to come back on. Please let us know. Thank you so, so much. We, we truly appreciate so, it. You're so great, and thank you so much. And I love everything we talked about. You're both just wonderful. And I promise you, when I'm allowed, when the thing, <laughs> when the news comes out yes. about the things that I'm doing, you'll think it's really fun, and that'll be. Yeah exciting to talk about we oh, will for sure for sure we will like I thank said, you 
Yeah, oh, anytime sorry. you want to come back on. Before before you take off, Ashley, if you can, sure. can you just do a quick little plug? You know, hey, this is Ashley Spillers, and you're listening to Zero Dark Nerdy. So that way we can have it on some of our intros there, too. Of course. All right. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Hey, this is Ashley Spillers, and you're listening to Zero Dark Nerdy. Love it. Love <laughs> it. Now, look at you. Always on, on the spot. That Todd Phillips story is something else, though. That's great. It Isn't just that wild? Yeah, that's crazy. That was... But seriously, uh, again, best of luck to your vent and your, your ventures coming up. Happy holidays, Happy Merry holidays. Christmas, Thank Feliz you. Navidad, all that. Yeah. Bye, Willow. Bye. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you Happy so holidays, much, you guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah! Victory and anger management. Fuck anger management.